Question number three from tutorial sheet two. The question asks to find radius of curvature. The only place we have radius of curvature is in normal acceleration formulation, which we have radius of curvature. And to be able to calculate the normal acceleration, we need to have the magnitude of the velocity vector or the speed, the total speed of the particle. Okay, in this problem we use combination of two approaches. Again, there is no unique approach to solve it, but one possible option to solve this problem is to use the combination of approach two fixed Cartesian coordinate system which usually we use for projectile motion because we can see here we have a projectile motion and later we use approach number two the normal tangential coordinate system because in that coordinate system we have the radius of curvature which the question asks ask for it Okay, first I apply approach 1, fixed Cartesian coordinate system here, my positive direction for x, my positive direction for y, and here is my initial velocity in x direction is equal to u cosine 60 degree and u is given is 500 and the initial velocity in y direction its magnitude its u which is 500 sine 60 degree and similar to any projectile option a problem we prefer to divide the two-dimensional movement problem in two one-dimensional motions. First we look at the movement in x direction because there is no air resistance as the problem clearly states Here, neglect the atmospheric resistance. It means we don't have a resistance or any kind of force in x direction, therefore, the acceleration is zero. We have a constant acceleration problem. Definitely, I can use the formulation which I have for constant acceleration problem multiply by time no sorry plus acceleration multiply by time but acceleration is zero in x direction therefore my vx is equal to the initial velocity equals to 500 cosine 60 this way and the final answer if we want to sim just finalize this is the magnitude of the velocity in x direction and you see because we have acceleration equal to zero in x direction we have a constant value for velocity at all points but here the question asks to 
Calculate the radius of curvature at t equals to 30 seconds. Again, I look at movements, but this time in y direction. In y direction, the initial velocity is equals to this one, 500 meter per second sine 60 degree, and the acceleration is the magnitude of acceleration is g, and we know the gravity is downward and we assume upward be positive direction for vertical physical parameters or vertical components then the acceleration is in opposite direction of the assumed positive or, assume or chosen sign converge then we have minus g or if you want to put some number is minus 5.0 Again, here I have a constant acceleration problem. You can see acceleration is constant. I, I can use the formulation which I had for constant acceleration. Initial velocity plus acceleration in y direction is equal to 500 sine 60 degree minus 9.81 multiply by t but the t is given by the problem yes we need to look at the problem or the particle at time equal to 30 seconds this is given by the question 30 the final answer would be 138.7 meter per second Okay, if I want to summarize from part A, from part A we have this one, the horizontal component of velocity, meter per second, and from part 2 we have the vertical component meter per second this if you assume this is the position of particle at this point yes we know the velocity is always tangent to the path of particle and if this is Vx and this is Vy and if we call this angle beta this is the total velocity we can see the tangent beta is equal to Vx over Vy Now we apply it here, the tangent beta is equal to Vx over Vy equals to 200, oh no, sorry, it's equal to Vy, yes, the opposite side, which is Vy, to adjacent side equals to Vy over Vx
Therefore, beta is the tangent inverse of 138.7 over 250, which is equal to 29 degrees. And also, this is Vx, this is Vy, and this is V. This is 90 degrees. Then V squared equals to Vx plus Vy is equal to 250 to the power of 2 plus 1 to the power of 2. It's equal to 8.7 multiply by 10 to the power of 3 meter squared second squared okay if I redraw the particle movement this is the path this is the point which we want to look at the particle after 30 seconds and here as I said the question asked for radius of curvature and we know the radius of curvature only appears in definition of the normal component of acceleration which is the component which we use in second approach approach 2 Okay, now approach two was normal tangential NT coordinate system. If you remember, AN was the total acceleration was V dot T, the rate of change of magnitude of velocity in tangential direction plus V squared over radius of curvature which represents the change of direction in normal direction. This is we call it the normal component, this is we call it the tangent component. We always have the normal component for curved or curvilinear motion. Yes, please read this part precisely. This is the summary of what we had in detail in the lecture. You may not have the tangential component because the tangential component, as we discussed, represents the change in magnitude. If you have a uniform circular motion, for example, the magnitude of your velocity vector is constant, then your AT, which is V dot, equals to zero. But you have always the normal component of acceleration. Okay, then from the question, we realize we need to use normal or tangential or anti-coordinate system as well. And if you see here at the beginning, we use Cartesian coordinate system, approach one, because we have a projectile motion. Then in this problem, we use combination of two approaches you may prefer to use another approach to solve it, that's fine. At the end, your answer should be exactly the same. Okay, if I want to use... First, I need to define the positive directions. The first one is 
e hat t, which is tangent to the pass at the point of particle position, and its direction is towards the movement direction, exactly like velocity. And we have another one which is normal to the first axis, to tangential axis, and its direction is always towards the center of curvature. These are the positive directions for NT coordinate system. Okay, in this problem we have a projectile. If we ignore the gravity and your projectile starts with angle, what was the original angle? Yes, 60 degree. Because there is no resistance of air, and if we assume there is no gravity, then there is no resistance. Your projectile carries the movement over a linear curve. Yes? Then, due to the reason we have this curve shape, passive motion, is due to gravity effect. This is the only force we have, F equals to mg. And also from Newton's second law, we know sigma F equals to ma. From these two, your acceleration is g. Then the reason we have a curved path of motion or curvilinear motion is due to gravity acceleration. This is the only acceleration we have. then I have here my gravity because if I don't have gravity as I said because we don't have any resistance in motion your passive motion would be a straight line without changing angle it's 60 degree okay then the source of curvilinear motion or the only acceleration which I have is downward and is gravity. And you can see this gravity has two components in the local coordinate system, in my anti-coordinate system. One component is this one, which is G, and this is beta g cosine beta and you can see it's positive because the direction of this component is exactly in direction of the unit vector in normal direction and another component projection of the g on tangential this is g sine beta but this component is negative because you see its direction is opposite to the unit vector direction you may ask why This angle is beta as well, because we calculated beta before. Okay. The way we define the e hat t, we said is always tangent to the path of motion. And its direction is towards the direction of movement. It's a unit vector, its magnitude is 1. Then it's exactly the same as velocity, because velocity is always tangent to the path of motion and its direction is direction of movement v hat and if you see here I have two component of velocity in x direction v x and another component in y direction if I call this angle beta it's clear that 
this angle is beta as well and previously in previous step we calculated because tangent beta is vy over vx you can see the two sides of these two angles are perpendicular to each other one by one and that's why these two angles are the same this one and this one okay now we have two components of gravity one component in the direction of e hat n which is the normal direction and one component in direction of e hat t but at the same time based on the definition you can see here we know in the anti-coordinate system the normal component of velocity is equal to v2 over rho. This is what we worked out for approach 2. It means my velocity, yes, in normal components, which is a n, and always positive because it's always towards the center of curvature as e hat n is. At the same time, the normal component of gravity is g cosine beta. And we know because the left hand sides are equal, the right hand sides should be equal as well. You know the beta we calculated in previous step 29 degree the g is 9.81 the v is squared we calculated here is 8.7 meters squared over seven and now you want to find the radius of curvature and the radius of curvature is v squared over g cosine beta is equal to 9529 meter. This is the final answer for this example. Again, the only source of acceleration is G. Yes, we know this is G. If you don't have G, otherwise we have just a straight line pass for the movements. And this G can have two components. One component is normal direction, which is G cosine beta, and this one is the source of normal acceleration because this is the acceleration in normal direction towards the center of curvature or in direction of e hat n and at the same time from the definition of the normal components in anti-coordinate system we know it's equal to v squared over rho then equal put equal g cosine beta equal to v to v squared over rho you can calculate the radius of curvature.